get going. Natty. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. A national champion will be crowned Fact. in the FCS ranks as the Sam Houston Bearcats take on the South Dakota State Jackrabbits for the FCS National Championship. It's going on 1 o'clock on Sunday on ABC. You can watch it live on your television screen. <clears throat> and so a, a bit about South Dakota State. South Dakota State has been an excellent football program for a long time and in the wrong place to be an excellent Exc yep. FCS football program. <laughs> Elite mascot too. May I throw oh, that the out there? Like you've got it. That this is just a good mascot oh, yeah. matchup here. Yes, for sure. But they have been an elite program mm -hmm. that has more or less operated in the shadow of the behemoth. Yes, they have just. Uh, they because North Dakota State exists, mm -hmm. and North Dakota State uh, ha won a national championship in 2019, 2018, 2017, 2015, 2014, 2013, 2012, 2011. It's just been bad, yes. right? Now they made the move up from one double A. Um, that for well, they were, uh, South Dakota State was a member of one double A in 2004. They made an FCS or they 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 made the playoffs ten. Uh, times since making the move up to the F what is now known as the FCS level. Just ridiculous. Um, Sam Houston's played uh, since 1984. They've been to 12 uh, postseasons. But this is the first time these two will ever meet. Mm -hmm. They have never uh, had a head-to-head -head in the regular season. They've never had a head-to-head -head in the playoffs. Um, Which is interesting. This is the first time that they've met, that, that these are two powerhouses mm -hmm. that are going to, you know, go at one another, you know, which is going to be very, very interesting. So, if you're looking for what um, w what South Dakota State does well, the answer is probably their offensive balance. We're going to get to their defense in a moment, but mm -hmm. their offensive balance, I think, is what's really impressive. Um, I think when we go back to when we were previewing North Dakota State, North Dakota State was a team that I think by virtue of – Trey Lance leaving, right? They had to find different ways to do it that weren't relying on throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. um, so they were really run heavy. They needed splash plays in, in defense, splash plays in, in special teams to, mm -hmm. to to make it happen. James Madison was a another team that that really ran the ball very well. Yes, uh, you know the, their quarterback had come on off late, but they were a team that wanted to control the clock, control the tempo of the game. Um, this is a team that in in South Dakota State that I think is pretty balanced. Yeah. They are, if you were to ask them what they are, they would say they're a running team. Pierre Strong Jr. is their, is their running, uh, is their star running back. He's the guy that's probably the bell cow of this offense. But they have had a real revelation um, in their freshman quarterback, uh, in Mark Gronowski. Mark Gronowski is their quarterback, and he is, he was the uh, Missouri Valley. Offensive Player of the Year. He was second in the Jerry Rice Award uh, 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 voting, which is given out to the top freshman in the FCS. Cameron Ward from Incarnate Word won it. Anyway. <laughs> Shout out Texas. Uh, and he's been sharp. Mm -hmm. Gronowski, the, the moment has not been too big for the freshman. Uh, he's thrown seven touchdown passes. He's run for a touchdown uh, on a trick play they had last year he, or last week against Delaware. He caught a touchdown pass. He's a playmaker. Yes. But the reason that they are here, I would say, is because of that offensive balance. But last week, their defense played their tails off against oh, Delaware. Yeah. Yeah. They completely smothered mm -hmm. Delaware, a good Delaware offense. Mm -hmm. And uh, Logan Backhouse, their, their their star linebacker, is probably the name to know there. They are a team that is really strong defensively. Well, and it was impressive, too, how they did it literally all four quarters. Yes. It never once wavered a little bit, or they didn't overperform in one half to make up for the lack of performance in the first half. It was literally the entire time the clock was running. Most certainly. And, and they are very, very strong up front on both sides. Mm -hmm. Offensive line um, and then as well they as got good size. In, in the front seven. They've got good size. It's a good team. Okay? And, and by the way, this was a... Um, this is a team that that you know last week Delaware had a really really good defense, 
and they found a way through them because they were just able to have that offensive diversity Mm -hmm. and kind of get them off balance and then get Delaware chasing, which is not what they wanted to do. Delaware is a, they they wanted, they were a team that wanted to control the clock. Once they fell behind, it it was a kind of snowball effect. Right. So I teased this earlier. Here is why Sam Houston is going to win this game and why they're going to win a national championship. It's because for all we talk, and everybody loves to talk about the Missouri Valley. Mm -hmm. The Missouri Valley is the, it's the SEC of the FCS. Right, yeah. Right, in large part, you know. And North Dakota's Alabama. North Dakota State, (laughs) right. They're they're all, man, if you come out of the Missouri Valley, then you're, you know, you're you're battle-tested and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The battle-tested team here is Sam Houston. Look at their playoff. This is the first seeded team that uh, that uh, Sam that uh, South Dakota State is going to play in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. The first seeded team. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I think you can make an argument that from the quarterfinal, semifinal, and now the national championship game, this is the worst team that these play. are the three best opponents. The I think that they have. I think that that Sam Houston State remove them from the conversation. Mm-hmm. I think they're the best team in FCS. Remove them from the conversation. These are the top three FCS teams in the nation, and Sam's already beaten two of them. Right. Sam's already beaten two of them. Arguably, the two top teams. I think there's a fair argument to be said that James Madison was the best team in the country yeah. last week. I, I think there's agree there. completely. Now, that's not to be disrespectful to South Dakota State. They're no, obviously no, Obviously no, an no. excellent team. Great team. They've earned their way here. I think that I think Sam Houston's the battle tested team. Just pound I think for they've pound, gone yeah. I think they've gone up against tougher opponents and they are battle tested. I think that Eric Schmidt, you know, I think he woke up last week and yep. they needed him to. I think they've got the playmakers in Jaquez as uh Ezard, mm-hmm. um who who came through when they really needed him last week. Um he was fantastic. And the reason that I love this Sam Houston team and when you watch them is that they have got a defensive line that the motor doesn't quit. Mm-mm. And the thing that I would say is that this was a, that as good as the South Dakota State offensive line is, I do not think that they are as good as James Madison. And James Madison, once Sam Houston got their got their uh, legs underneath them, Jahari K and company got after their rear end. That is for me the biggest difference here. Mm-hmm. I look at the bat. I look at being battle tested. And I think Sam Houston is battle tested. Mm-hmm. I think that they under. I think that I am fairly certain that Sam Houston has played a team like South Dakota State, and I am not certain that South Dakota State has played a team like Sam Houston. No, there's. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, but I think the big thing for Sam Houston is one, they can't look at the other two games that they've played no. and said, "Well, these teams are a little bit better, so this should be like they can't sleep on them yes. first off, and then two, <laughs> they have got to find that balance between not having any special teams to almost completely relying on their special teams that you've got to come in the middle there and just have a solid game. And I think that it should be a, you know, here's, here's one key for Sam Houston is they are, and they've been very reliant, especially in the playoffs on home runs, Mm -hmm. very reliant on hitting big plays. I think they need to make it easier for themselves. Yes. They need to be a little less reliant on hitting home runs and go out there and not wait for the three run home run instead. Right. To continue the baseball analogy, just singles. hit a bunch of singles. Just singles. Okay, <laughs> get into second and get into second and three. Mm-hmm. We'll open up that playbook and things like that. There's one other aspect of this. Okay, I think there's one other aspect of this. I think people have talked a lot about how North Dakota State, when they come down here to, to Frisco, they they they, they just dominate. I mean, mm-hmm. they've they they've uh, they won it. You know, we we rattled off all their all their state all their national championships, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all all of those coming in Frisco. This game is not happening in January. It's going to be toasty this weekend. It's going to be in the 80s. Okay? And one of these teams is used to playing games in the 80s. Especially in, in the humidity of Houston, which adds a lot. Frisco. <laughs> I, I'm saying they're used to oh, playing yeah, in yeah. the humidity. In, 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 in Huntsville. Just that, yeah, you're that right. increases yeah. the heat index, yeah, you could say. Texas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of these teams is used to that. One of these teams is traveling an hour and a half, two mm-hmm. hours. Uh, Huntsville's three hours. Three hours mm-hmm. to Frisco. Another of these is going across the country down to what is, you know, getting into summer. Mm-hmm. 
I think that has an aspect too. As I think, I think North Dakota State, and, and they've loved it whenever it's been chilly in in January here. I think that that may have an impact in what figures to be a close game. I like Sam Houston. They're underdogs in this game. I think they're four and a half point underdogs. They were underdogs last week against James Madison. At some point, people are going to figure out that this is the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Sam Houston and wins this game. Hopefully, that's on Sunday. <laughs> I think I think Sam Houston wins this game. I think they win this game, thirty four twenty seven. There's your official prediction. Okay. I like Sam Houston State, 34, South Dakota State, 27. And finally, the state of Texas will have a national championship at every level of NCAA football. That would be so cool. We've already got FBS. So cool. We've already got Division Two thanks to a and Commerce. We've mm-hmm. already got Division Three thanks to Mary Hart and Baylor. We are missing that FCS piece. Yes. It comes on Sunday. And there it is. 34-27, Sam Houston State beats South Dakota State. Is the line, we looked it up, the spread was, it was four. Four and a half. Four and a half yesterday? It was four and a half. Which is, I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Four and a half in favor of South Dakota. Yeah, South Dakota <laughs> State. They, they, are, they are the team. I, I think that walking that tougher schedule is going to have them ready for this moment. Mm-hmm. And I think, that, I think that this is the year that we have probably overrated the Missouri Valley a little bit. Yep, and keep, keep that championship trophy in the state of Texas. That's 100%. what we want. There you go. There's, there's a look at going on Sunday, 1 o'clock on ABC. Go Bearcats. 